<laughs> Maybe the aliens are like, nah, it's cool. We don't get super far from that. We don't find it weird. It's cool. <laughs> Alf, you sicko. <laughs> Little beetle motherfucker. Ah, breakfast cereal. Who doesn't love it? I love it. Children love it. Adults love it. Doesn't always love your bag though, does it? Because you, I don't know, go to the supermarket, pick up a box of like generic cereal off the shelf and just tell me like how many crazy amounts of carbohydrates and sugar it has in it. You'll be like, oh yeah, delicious super sugary puff cereal. And then you look at it, it's like, oh boy. <laughs> how much of my recommended allowance of sugar? <laughs> why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they're bad for you. It's just how it is. You know, it tastes so sweet. It tastes so good. Like this advert is not knocking cereal in any way. Cereal's delicious. Before Magic Spoon, I loved cereal. But like I say, it doesn't love you back. But with Magic Spoon, you get all of the joy of cereal with none of the negatives. Look, zero grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, 14 grams of protein, very slightly per box. This new one, Honey Nut, she has a gram of sugar. Shh. It is very delicious though. And I'm sure that's less than pretty much like all of the cereals in the supermarket. Other than the ones that taste horrible. Where you're like, why is why is this good for you? Oh, it tastes like ass. The unnamed cereal, which is what's that one? You know, the one that contains all the fiber. You know, like, why does it taste terrible? Cause it's cause it's cause it's good for you. And you have to add like seven spoons of sugar to make it good. Look, enough about other cereals. I should be talking about Magic Spoon because it solved all the problems. It's just made it perfect. And it's delicious. This is my favorite flavor. The new Honey Nut one is also delicious. I don't even know what this is. Oh, is this the gingerbread one? Yeah, the gingerbread one. Not my favorite, but you know, I can see why people like it. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of gingerbread in the real world. So that kind of makes sense why I'm not the biggest fan of that. Cinnamon is also the shizzle. Um, What else do I need to say? There's some things they make me say. Uh, yes, 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 yes. It's gluten-free. It's grain-free. Natural flavoring. Love it. It's also got a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for some reason, perhaps because you've lost your mind, you can get your money back. Brilliant. Go to the link below or magicspoon.com slash blaze. Use the code blaze. You'll get $5 off your order today, and be sure to add the new honey nut flavor. That's the one I just ate. Add that to your custom box. And uh, yeah, like I say, magicspoon.com slash blaze, code blaze, $5 off, and now today's video. Ah, oh, welcome back to another episode of Business Blaze. This one, I think it's the first one in a very long time that is not written by Danny. Don't click off, don't click off. It's written by Kevin, who uh, previously worked with Danny very briefly. I've got another channel called Decoding the Unknown, where we play an amazing game where uh, primarily Kevin writes, wrote me like five stories um, like internet mysteries or just mysteries in general because that channel's all about mysteries and I had to guess which ones are fake and which ones are real and people play along at home. It's really popular. Everyone loves it. I love it. It's probably the most fun thing I do. Danny and Kevin worked on one of those together and uh, Kevin has been hassling me for ages for his crack at a brain blaze script. So I was like, all right, Kevin, fine. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if you are up to snuff. Look, even if he's not, even if he's not. Give us some love in the comments below. <laughs> be generous. Be gentle. Greetings, Brainblaze. I regret to inform you that the regularly scheduled Danny could not be here today because he died in the basement. And Simon has filled the boxes of magic spoon that he munches on with Danny's skin. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Danny's skin. Uh, that's some pretty dark stuff. That or Danny was busy. I don't know, I was only half listening. <laughs> Previously on this channel, Danny covered children's shows that were absolutely terrifying. Today, we'll instead be looking at shows that, despite normally being the sort of mindless drivel that entertain the smallest and dumbest members of the human race, and that's not us, is it, big brains? Never. Have series finales that were dark, disturbing, or otherwise just completely f insane. When I mention kids' shows with f up series finales, the first image that probably comes to mind is the alcoholic version of the cat named Tom and his Murray companion Jerry sitting on train tracks with bloodshot eyes, anxiously awaiting the 315 to Newark to pass through and end their miserable anthropomorphized lives. Wait, what? Is that really how the end of Tom and Jerry was? You can't be serious. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. While Tom and Jerry absolutely did commit suicide by train, no fing way! What are you doing? <laughs> Disney, what the f man in the 1956 episode blue cat blues it was not the series finale uh, uh, okay i mean it sounds like it seems pretty final 
They committed suicide. <laughs> Changing nature. Dinosaurs was a sitcom about a family of dinosaurs that ran on ABC for four seasons. Jim Henson began pitching the idea in 1988, but people told him that he was crazy. It wasn't until the success of The Simpsons. I can smell Danny's skin escaping from the box and it's unpleasant. Okay. Either that or it was in the way of me waving my hands. It wasn't until the success of The Simpsons showed us that a primetime sitcom with children as a target audience could work that the show would finally get the green light. Unfortunately, Jim Henson died before dinosaurs would ever air. I'm gonna sound really dumb right now, but I'm not. Is Jim Henson the guy who created the, uh, the show with Big Bird? The Muppets? That's Jim Henson, right? I'm gonna take so much heat if I get that wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Jim Henson. Either that or he's the guy who does that painting. No, that's Bob. No, Bob Ross is someone else. Wait, Bob Ross is the painting guy? And who's the other guy? There's like another guy who does um, Mr. Rogers. See? Look at me. Look at my knowledge of American culture. <laughs> Big brain. Hello there. Welcome back. This show, like, we didn't have the painting show. We didn't have Mr. Rogers in the UK. I only learned about these as an adult. Seems very wholesome, America. Very wholesome. I like it. The show followed the antics of the Sinclair family, led by their bumbling but well-intentioned, rather Homer Simpson-esque patriarch, Earl. The characters were a mix of animatronics and puppetry, and puppets are creepy, though. They have that uncanny valley going on. And though it was family-friendly, there were a lot of adult themes in the show. The show tacked in everything from sexual harassment, steroids, puberty and masturbation, to televangelists, civil rights, the Gulf War, and white-collar crime actually sounds like quite a good show this was targeted towards children though <laughs> holy shit. it also made fun of the commercialization of television in general with one of the popular children's tv chat characters within the show's canon being captain action figure this was particularly ironic since dinosaurs had more than its fair share of merchandise targeting children including happy meal toys when it was time for the sitcom about dinosaurs to end there was only one logical option for the series finale there had to be a mass extinction event. It's a kid's show! Also, what are dinosaurs doing in the Gulf War? Like, Jesus, this is getting very confusing. Oh, uh, they're all gonna be killed. Oh my god. You might think that that means that a giant asteroid was going to collide with the planet, but that was far too quick and painless for anyone near the impact zone. The writers of this show wanted to make sure every last dinosaur suffered a slow and painful death. The finale, titled Changing Nature, begins with the Sinclairs grilling in honor of the annual Bunch Beetle Day when swarms of Bunch Beetles would come and devour the invasive cider poppies that began growing that time of year. But the Beetles never came because their spawning grounds had been paved over by Earl's employer, the Wesaso Corporation, to build a wax fruit factory. Kids chose to have a long history of fantastic depictions of evil corporations, but I much prefer Conglomo from Rocco's Modern Life and their absolutely perfect slogan and logo. Oh yeah. Kevin, I'm absolutely lost. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. I don't understand. I don't understand. Earl becomes the director of the task force assigned to deal with the cider poppy crisis, which is to say that he's Wasaso's idiotic fall guy. The company's solution to the problem is to spray the entire planet with poison to kill off all the poppies. The plan works, but it works too well and it kills off all plant life on the entire planet, thereby eliminating the entire food chain. That's pretty bad, but the Wasaso has a solution to that problem too. Plants need water to grow. Water comes from clouds. What is known for creating massive clouds? Why, volcanoes, of course! That's right, the solution to... There, this is a very poor understanding of what is a volcano. and That is not a regular rain cloud that is coming out of the volcano. It's extremely hot ash that's going to devastate everything. <laughs> Oh no. That's right, the solution to the environmental crisis they created was to simultaneously bomb every volcano on Earth to make them erupt and spew clouds into the air. Once again, the plan works, but the thick layer of black sulfur clouds in the atmosphere essentially creates a nuclear winter that is projected to last for tens or thousands of years. Ah! While Dinosaurs was a genuinely funny show that still holds up, they don't even try to play this ending for laughs. The Sinclairs are bundled up in their house trying to stay warm, while Earl apologizes to everyone for taking nature for granted in lieu of shiny new technology. It would be depressing enough on its own, but the show's most marketable character, Baby Sinclair, doesn't understand what's happening, forcing Earl to explain global Armageddon in terms that a toddler will understand. 
Just be like, it's God. God has smited us. Just keep it simple. Well, little guy, what happened was daddy was put in charge of the world and he didn't take very good care of it. And now it looks like there won't be much of a world left for you and your brother to live in. I have a toddler. They wouldn't understand that. They would not understand that. The family tries to reassure the baby that things are going to work out somehow, but their surprisingly articulate animatronic faces tell a different story. They're all completely f***ed, and they're all going to die in that house, either from freezing or of starvation. As the snow continues to fall across Pangaea, I'm extremely confused. These are actually dinosaurs, but they seem to live in the modern world, but also there's Pangaea, which is when all the continents were mashed together. This show is a confusing mess of a show. Jim Henson. Or whoever ended up making this. The series ends with one final news broadcast. And there are news broadcasts? What's going on? And taking a look at the long range forecast, continued snow, darkness, and extreme cold. This is Howard Handupe. Good night. Goodbye. Consider me gone. Remember Alf? He's back in Blaze form. Alf was an acronym for Alien Life Form. His real name was Gordon Shumway, an alien from the planet Melmac. And I don't remember Alf. I'm vaguely familiar because I'm pretty sure I've seen pictures of Alf. He's that weird thing with a long nose, right? I feel like there are memes of him that I'm not really familiar with. And he crash landed on Earth after fleeing Melmac, which was destroyed by nuclear war. Don't worry, this series finale isn't going to be more touchy-feely, save the world crap. Alf crashes into the garage of the Tanner family, who take him in as one of their own, and until he can fit his spacecraft. It wasn't a great show, but it managed to run for four excruciatingly long years. In all that time, poor Alf never Never even got to eat the family cat. A Malmatian delicacy that makes no sense. Why would they have cats on an alien planet? Did you not think about this for like half a second? Jesus Christ. The series finale, Consider Me Gone, opens with Alf trying to contact Australia via ham radio. You see, due to time zones in Australia, it was already tomorrow, so he wanted to contact the future to get the previous day's lottery winning numbers. Not a very smart alien, was he? So they've mastered inter interstellar travel, but they haven't mastered a basic understanding of time. That explains why the show got cancelled, but not how it ran for four seasons. Instead of winning lottery numbers, Alf picks up on a Malmation signal from his friends Skip and Rhonda, who have just bought a new planet and are going to build a new Melmac. They invite him to join them, but he has to decide where he wants to go with them or stay with his surrogate family on Earth. You may be thinking that's an easy choice, but Skip and Rhonda don't allude to anyone else being involved in this plan. If they're going to populate an entire planet together, Alf has to consider exactly how much incest he's comfortable with. As it turns out, the answer is lots of incest because Alf replies back to them in American Morse code where and when to pick him up. Well, maybe it's okay. Maybe they're okay with incest. Like, I don't know, beetles and shit, they don't think about incest. <laughs> maybe the aliens are like, nah, it's cool. We don't get super far from that. We don't find it weird. It's cool. <laughs> Alf, you sicko. <laughs> <laughs> little beetle mother possibly literally at the agreed upon place and time the family say their goodbyes and as the lights from skip and ronda's spacecraft shine down on alf suddenly the ship is scared off by the approach of dozens of government vehicles surrounding the area you see since the pilot episode the government's alien task force aware of the crash landing have been trying to locate alf they intercepted the communications and finally were able to track down the extraterrestrial for the entirety of the series viewers knew that the government wanted to torture experiment on and finally dissect this new mysterious life form the series ended with the government scientists finally getting their wish his alf was now their prisoner and was destined for execution at the hands of the government this is a horrible ending it's all oh, the beloved alf yeah he's gonna be uh, tortured and dissected they're gonna remove his little alien heart if he even has a heart they'll soon find out it's just like the movie et except this time the good guys won Wait, <laughs> the government could dissect even the good guys? Jesus. Lumpus's last stand. I wish that I knew some of these TV shows, though, Kevin. I don't know any of them. The Cartoon Network show Camp Laszlo was more than a bit after my time, but holy sh is this bizarre. It ran for five seasons, from 2004 to 2008, during which time it won multiple Emmys and other awards, including Best Animated Series for Children and Best Animated Series for All Ages. I feel like if you're targeting, well, what's your target market? All Ages. Like Business Blaze. Uh, like Brain Blaze. We're targeted towards all ages. No, we're not. Old people probably find this weird and intense. Young people probably are like, don't get it. In fact, I feel most people probably don't get it. Is there anything to get? I don't even know. Feels very broad. The show takes place at Camp Kidney, and the main character is named Laszlo. The most important character for the finale, however, is Scoutmaster Lumpus. A running theme throughout the show is Lumpus's hatred for doing laundry, though to be fair, I feel like I might know this show. I feel like I've heard this show, heard of this show. 
I feel like I know the character Lumpus, and I feel like I know he doesn't like to do laundry. Why the f would I possibly know that? Though, to be fair, laundry day is a very dangerous day. Don't worry, Simon, I know you don't get the reference, but enough of the audience will. You're yeah, absolutely right, Kevin, I don't get the reference. Someone enlighten me in the comments. Lumpus decides that he's going to run off into the woods forever to escape the oppressive shackles of dirty laundry when he accidentally steps in a bucket of paint. The paint matches the color of the sock on his other foot, and he has a brilliant plan. Instead of wearing clothes, he and the campers are just going to be naked and paint clothes on themselves. Already a little bit weird and creepy, but whatever. A police officer sees what's going on and adds them to the sex offenders register. Not really. And decides it's a brilliant idea, and so he paints on a uniform and goes to sell all of his friends. This is a terrible idea. It's going to, you have to paint on your clothes every day? One, everyone's going to know you're still naked, and also it's going to be extremely time-consuming and uncomfortable. We don't just wear clothes for modesty. There's lots of other reasons. Warmth. Modesty. <laughs> Lumpus becomes heralded as a genius and is given a plaque by the mayor. Two time travelers suddenly appear from a thousand years in the future to thank him. Okay. Because the plan freed up so much time that society solved world hunger. Then it starts to rain, the paint washes off, and everyone is left naked. Lumpus is no longer considered a genius. Now he's a crackpot. What? This didn't happen. It didn't rain from a thousand years into the future. What the is what, this is such a strange show. That's when the police show up and Heifer Wolf from Rocco's Modern Life gets out. I have no idea what Rocco's Modern Life is. Did we mention that earlier? You see, Heifer was the scoutmaster this entire time. Lumpers was an escaped mental patient who had locked Heifer in a closet and stolen the job of scoutmaster as an imposter. And now he's standing naked, right there, with all the children. Best animated series for all ages. <laughs> the Mountain of Beyond. The World of David and the gnome was originally a spanish cartoon that was localized for english-speaking audiences by a canadian company that got legendary actor tom bosley to voice david the gnome i discovered something it blew my mind the other day they have a spanish version of breaking bad and you might think why well, it's dubbed or it's like you know sometimes they'll remake a show into spanish no no it's a shot for shot remake so they remake the show with spanish actors but it's not like they've you know taken it to be a local thing it's just reshot with spanish actors and i'm like that's kind of genius kind of blew my i'd never heard of that before just remaking a show entirely shot for shot cool david was obviously a gnome but he was also a doctor the <laughs> children's shows are so stupid i watched peppa pig with my kids and i'm like but the the the, 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 the all of their facial features are on one side of their face this isn't accurate at all. It took me ages to work out, like, why are they driving a car with, like, so there's a car, and then there's two wheels at the back and two wheels at the front, like, next to each other, like this. And I was like, oh, it's because they don't understand perspective. It's like, they should be like this. And I was like, why are they driving an eight-wheeled car? It's weird. And then I realized, oh, look at their faces, look. All of the features. It'd be like if I was looking, the, looking, you're looking at me like this, right? But all of my face features were here, and the rest of it was just like a blank flesh weird the series follows him and his fox companion named swift as they go on adventures bandaging animals and running from trolls gnomes live for a long time on this show 400 years to be exact for some idiotic reason the creators of the show decided that david and his wife lisa should both start the series at age 399 the cartoon ran on nickelodeon in the 1980s and 1990s but it only had 26 episodes out of nowhere in the 26th episode david and lisa decide that it's time for them to climb on top of a mountain and die this comes out of nowhere in the show swift helps them climb up the mountain then watches with a look of absolute terror on his face as the two gnomes turn into trees i mean seriously what the f it's a cute show about a veterinarian gnome who also has telepathic powers by the way i mean why not and after 26 episodes the writers decide mm, let's just make him commit suicide and turn him into a tree with no f warning whatsoever the kids won't find that alarming Never. No way. Come on. <laughs> there are more shows that I'd love to bring up and things I wish I could expand upon, but Simon gave me a word cap of 2,000 words, fitting an entire script into the length of one, e one of Danny's introductions. <laughs> You're right, Kevin. It's called a beginner script. I also asked Danny to stick to 2,000 words. He just doesn't. Ah! <laughs> Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Brain Blaze, written by Kevin. Let me know in the description below. Description below? You can't edit that. You're just a viewer. It's what the comments are for. Thanks for watching.
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before you leave, let me tell you about a new channel that I'm doing called Into the Shadows. So maybe the world isn't dark enough for you. Well, good news, it absolutely is. And if you'd like to know more about the horrible things that humans have been doing to each other since, well, time immemorial, well, please check out that new channel, Into the Shadows. From landmines to penal colonies to horrific diseases, if it's horrific, we cover it. Check it out through the link in the description below. Again, it's called Into the Shadows. And thank you for watching. Kevin, I'm absolutely lost. I have no idea what any of this stuff is.